Hey everyone, it's Tyler the Antenna Man bringing you this video outside of my usual YouTube studio. Javier Ruano, a broadcast engineer with a PhD and the president and general manager of Televis USA, is running for a seat on the ATSC board. For those of you who don't know, ATSC is the organization behind the television standards in the United States, including ATSC 1.0 and ATSC 3.0. Javier's message throughout his candidacy is that the biggest threat to broadcast TV is not simply ATSC 1.0, ATSC 3.0, or even DRM. He believes that ATSC 3.0 matters and brings some real future potential if deployed correctly, but none of that matters if the general public doesn't know that over-the-air TV exists. Javier's focus is on bringing the industry together on awareness, education, better reception, installer support, and making broadcast TV visible and simple for the average person to use so that adoption follows. To bring that perspective into the conversation, he recorded an interview with me about what I hear every day from viewers like you. I'm sharing it here because it highlights something we both see from two different angles. A massive lack of awareness among the general public about antennas, broadcast TV, and next-gen TV, especially among younger viewers. Before I share the video, I want to wish you all a happy Thanksgiving. Be sure to sign up to my email list linked in the description as I will be sharing some great Black Friday deals on TV antennas and other accessories. Without further ado, here is the video interview. Hello everyone, Javi here. Throughout this election cycle, I've tried to bring something different into the conversation, the real world out there. Not just the boardrooms or the lab tests, but the actual experience of the people who use broadcast TV and the people who keep it alive. Just a few days ago, I was at a plaque fest, very fine, advanced 3 row features and making sure the standard works as designed. But the lab is only half the story. The other half lives on rooftops, inside living rooms, and in the inboxes of the people who hear from viewers every single day. And that thought made me want to speak with Tyler, the antenna man. Now, him and I have our disagreements, to be sure, but whether we agree with all his takes or not, he talks to thousands of real viewers every month. He hears their frustrations, their confusion, their reception issues, and their expectations for what free TV should be. Voices that very rarely reach the people making decisions. So this conversation is not about technical minutiae or discussing the RM again. It's about a much bigger issue, the huge gap between the potential of broadcast and 3.0, and the experience of the average user out there. Because viewers don't care about modulation or codecs. They care about getting their local channels reliably, easily, and for free. And here's the key point. None of the advanced future capabilities we talk about are likely to reach their full potential unless we fix awareness, installation, simplicity, and messaging. And we will not fix any of that unless the industry moves together. If we want to deliver on the promise of 3.0, we need broadcasters, manufacturers, retailers, integrators, and standard bodies aligned behind one shared mission. Make broadcast visible, simple, demanded, and loved. So here's a short edited video of our conversation, just as another real world data point, and maybe a reminder of what viewers actually need. And very humbly, as another push for all of us to move forward together. Thank you. From where you see it, Tyler, what is the biggest misconception viewers have today about over-the-air television and next-gen TV? So what I've noticed is, in general, the average person has pretty much no idea that over-the-air TV exists. Every time I tell people that I'm a YouTube channel about you know, TV antennas, they don't really understand it. When I explain it to them, the whole concept kind of goes over their heads, you know, unless they're over the age of like 45 or 50. The whole concept of picking up local TV stations from an antenna just kind of flies over their heads. Yeah. I think the reason for that is that TV stations have never really mentioned antennas as an option, probably as a way to protect retransmission fees. But I think at the same time, that's kind of killing them in the long run because most people my age, I'm 32 right now. Uh, most of my friends are between the ages of like 24 to 35. Uh, none of them are, maybe one or two of them use an antenna. Yeah. I think really um, just the, the misconception people have is they just don't really know about it. 
they're not aware that it's an existing modern digital service that it's even better than streaming, uh, you know, for, for a lot of the things you want to watch. How ATSC3, that is also misunderstood. They don't understand it's not only about linear broadcast, it's also about a public service that can deliver all these new things. But they can't get there because they don't even know that it's a thing anymore. Even the people who I talk to that have antennas, I'd say less than 5% of them know anything about next-gen TV. And that's a really small market of an already small market. I think we need to fix awareness before any advanced features even matter. What real problems could ATSC 3.0 solve today if it was implemented with the viewer in mind? So what I've noticed about next-gen TV over the years is it promotes these features that the average person really doesn't care about. One of the most important things that people really care about is getting their local channels. That's yeah. all they really want. And, and if they use an antenna, they want to get their local channels as reliably as possible. And what I think the, the broadcast industry should do is they should really use high, like really robust PLPs to uh -huh. expand the coverage of the broadcast signal to reach more people. They buy a piece of junk on Amazon and just because the current TV standard is really fragile and doesn't handle multipath well, they don't get all their channels and they just kind of give up. And then essentially the local affiliates lost them as a viewer. I think that really has to be done. It was kind of done in the beginning. And there are many times I mentioned in my videos, hey, if you have reception problems, you yeah. purchase a 3.0 tuner and it'll yeah. fix them. And I got a lot of people to do that. And they were very, very happy for a while until uh, the DRM issue uh, happened and locked them out of what they had, had uh, gained. But that's a whole yeah. other uh, issue. I would say the most important thing is trying to use robust PLPs to expand coverage and, and actually solve a problem people have. You know, marketing next-gen TV as a way to improve reception and get more channels is going to get a lot more people on board as opposed to Adobe Atmos and what, what what's HDR, what is that? The main pitch is that is they want to make it so robust that it can be received everywhere. And that's the main reason why they are adopting this technology. And then once that happens, then we kind of start rolling out all these Cool new things as well. As you mentioned, the most important thing is like getting viewers on board to this uh, new technology. Uh, and obviously that also takes into account better coverage planning, which is a technical plan for what digital terrestrial television needs to be in the country. An installer network would be such a dream for the United States. It's so hard to find. People, they do one of like 20 things to mess up their reception. Either they, per most, most likely they purchase the wrong antenna, they point in correctly, they use the wrong amplifier, they use too many amplifiers. This goes on and on. The average person has no clue and they're pretty much doomed if they're looking for someone and they want a local installer but they don't know where to find any or they might not be in there any in their area so then they just kind of stick with whatever they have which may be you know cable satellite or streaming service it's just just direct channel two channel five channel seven and so then it's it's right in front and center and people are more likely to watch their local affiliates more than whatever they're watching now. I think as an industry, we continue to ignore that reality and you know, just go out there by an indoor antenna, hook it up to this Wi-Fi box, put it on the window, it's gonna work for you. That, that's not gonna work. It's, it hasn't worked for 20 years since the, since the digital transition. It's not gonna work now. Uh, I think we gotta find a way as an industry to foster a climate where that business kind of flourishes. Right. We gotta create the conditions for that to happen. Mm -hmm. Developing that, that digital terrestrial technical plan, aid for this, companies that want to make this because when you get to them it's such a patchwork of knowledge the way they do things the way they've learned things so there's got to be some kind of a framework where they can go to is this is how this is done these are the specs this is the levels that i need to ensure uh, in some other countries there's regulation for this the same way you have an electrical code or you have you know a plumbing code it teaches them how to do this and how to connect everything so they're lost out there it's like the wild west Education really is the key. And it was as easy as just setting up an antenna and getting all the channels. I wouldn't have 300,000 people watching my YouTube videos a month trying to figure it out. I totally agree with you. It starts from the top. And having that kind of plan, you know, an installer network, that kind of stuff you just mentioned, is definitely going to be key to success. So here's the question. What should broadcasters and industry partners be doing right now to tell the story better? Not about only as ATSC3 that was a technical standard, but about free, reliable TV as a service that solves real, real problems. There needs to be some kind of marketing. I see pretty much zero marketing. I never see any TV station ever mention like a TV antenna. They just show cable and satellite services and you know YouTube TV. Younger audiences that don't know how to get their local channels 
beyond their parents' cable box. They're not tuning in to broadcast TV. As I mentioned, I'm 32. Uh, most of my social circle is age 24 to you know 35. And none of them are watching broadcast TV. Yeah. Something on the station website, that's a resource that points people in the right direction about you know what antennas are good for the area, how to point them. And we'll also really start to, to uh, market to millennials and Gen Z who are not yeah. tuning in at all. They're going to get older and older and they're in broadcast TV is just going to lose its audience. It's going to happen like 10 or 20 years if things don't change. I, I really think broadcast TV has to start doing something to promote the usage of an antenna and stop being quiet because that's going to kill them in the long run. Communicate the public service value of broadcast. And then with that, all the new features with, that are possible with the new standard. Yeah. There's better picture quality in cable and satellite. For the sports fans, there's lower latency, so lower delay. And this is something I also notice among people my age is they're watching a, a sporting event like a football game on YouTube TV and they're in a group chat. And so then people who are watching it on cable or satellite or me and antenna, they'll see something happen first and they'll text their friend, text the group yeah. chat about it. And then people who are watching on the stream are just kind of like it spoils them. So you reach viewers directly without any filters? same as I do with my customers. So if you could tell the ATSC board and the brother industry really, one thing they need to understand about real viewers, what would you tell them? So viewers just want to pick up their local channels reliably. That's it. They just want to pick up their local channels reliably. And a lot of them aren't just because of the current TV standard, all the flaws with it. They really just want to pick up their local channels. That's that's why they come to me. That's why they watch my videos. That's why they pay me to directly look at their reception situation, tell them what to do. Very few are looking for, I want, you know, 4K, 1080p, HDR. No, they, they just want ABC's not coming in. I want it to come in better. CBS is not picked up. How do I get CBS? They they just want to get their local channels reliable. And it's, it's killing the long-term success especially among younger viewers. And um, I do want to thank you for taking the time to do this because you're really going out of your way. Hey, thank you, Taylor. I appreciate you, okay? Yep, thank you so much.